Yeah, well, hello everybody. Hope you're all having an amazing Monday or had an amazing Monday or whatever. Anyway, so let's continue our look at the Hammer Dracula movies with The Brides of Dracula. Here we go. A gloomy wood is seen as a voice is heard narrating Transylvania, land of dark forests, dread mountains, and black, unfathomable lakes. Still the home of magic and devilry as the 19th century draws to its close. Count Dracula, the monarch of all vampires, is dead, but his disciples live on to spread the cult and corrupt the world. Marianne Danielle, a young French school teacher en route to take up a position in Transylvania, is abandoned at a village inn by a coach driver. Rude. Ignoring the warnings of the locals, she accepts the offer of Baroness Meinster to spend the night at her castle. There, she sees the Baroness's handsome son whom she is told is insane and kept confined. When she sneaks into his quarters to meet him, she is shocked to find him chained by his leg to the wall, and when he tells her that his mother has usurped his rightful lands and pleads for her help, she agrees to steal the key to his chain from the Baroness's bedroom. Discovering this, the Baroness is horrified, yet when her son appears, she obeys him and accompanies him back to his room. Later, Marianne discovers the Baroness's servant Greta, who has also taken care of the Baron since he was a baby, in hysterics. She shows Marianne the Baroness's corpse and the puncture marks in her throat. Marianne flees into the night upon seeing this, while Greta chastises the Baroness for raising her son on cruelty and cavorting with bad company in the past, which led to one such being, Dracula, turning him into a vampire, and the Baroness having to chain him in his room while feeding him any girls that she lured to the castle. Despite knowing the evil he intends to the village, Greta remains loyal to the Baron. Why? Marianne is found later exhausted by Dr. Van Helsing the following morning. She doesn't remember all that has happened, nor is she familiar when asked about the words undead or vampirism. He scores her to the school where she is to be employed. When Van Helsing reaches the village inn, there he finds there is a funeral, funeral in progress. A young girl has been found dead in the woods with wounds upon her throat. He contacts his father, Stepnik, who had requested Van, Hels Van Helsing's presence, having suspicions about the castle and the Baroness. He tries to dissuade the girl's father from burying her, but he doesn't listen, allowing more time for her transformation to be complete. Indeed, Stepnik's fears are confirmed when Helsing, and later Stepnik himself, goes to the cemetery that night in hopes of stopping the transformation, only to find Greta already there. Greta aids the newly vampirized village girl to rise from her grave. The men try to stop her, but Greta holds them off and allows the girls allows the girl to flee. When Helsing goes to the castle and discovers the Baroness, now risen as a vampire herself, as well as the Baron. After a brief scuffle, the Baron flees on a coach driven by the village girl, abandoning his mother, who is full of self loathing and guilt over her actions with her son. Knowing that the Baron has no interest in controlling her, and that the transformation was his, was his revenge on her for locking him up, Helsing takes pity on her, and, after sunrise the next morning, kills her with a wooden stake as she slumbers. The Baron, meanwhile, visits Marianne at the school and asks her to marry him. She accepts, much to the good-natured envy of her roommate, Gina. However, once Gina is alone, Baron Meinster appears in her room, hypnotizes her, and drains Gina of her blood. When Van Helsing visits the next day, he finds the school in a small uproar over Gina's death. After expecting, inspecting Gina's body and finding bite wounds on her neck, Helsing orders that her body be placed in, in horse stables with people watching it until, until he returns. That night, Marianne relieves the headmaster's wife of her watch. Initially, she is with the stable keeper, Severin, when, in a scene derived from M.R. James's Cal Magnus, one of the padlocks on the coffin falls off without unlocking. Severin goes outside to fetch another lock, but is killed by a vampire bat, presumably the Baron or the village girl from earlier, while inside the last lock falls from the coffin. The coffin lid is pushed open and Gina rises, now a vampire, and smiles with her newly formed, her newly formed fangs at Marianne. She approaches Marianne, asking for forgiveness for letting the Baron love her. She also realizes the whereabouts of the Baron, who was setting up the old mill, and tries to convince Marianne to come with her so that, so, they can both love him. Okay. 
Van Helsing discovers the body of Severin and rushes into the stables. Seeing him and likely knowing his vampire hunter status from her connection with the Baron, Gina flees while Van Helsing attends to Marianne, who has fainted from the events. Van Helsing takes Marianne back to his school to calm her down. Marianne doesn't want to believe that Gina or the Baron are vampires, but Van Helsing confirms that they are, stating that the Gina she once knew is indeed dead and has been resurrected as the Baron's new vamp newest vampire bride, now evil and completely under his control. If not stopped, neither the Baron nor she will have qualms attacking the school under his commands and adding to their undead ranks. Reluctantly, Marianne tells Van Helsing what Gina told her. The vampire hunter goes to the old mill and manages to find the Baron's coffin, but is confronted by both the Meinster's brides as well as Greta, who commands Gina and the village girl to obey their master's commands and kill Helsing. Helsing wards the brides off with his cross, but Greta, who is human and unaffected, manages to wrestle it away from him only to trip and plummet from the rafters, dying in the fall. However, the cross falls into the well below the mill, <coughs> is now at Van Helsing's reach as the Baron arrives, brandishing a length of chain. In the fight that follows, the Baron manages to subdue Van Helsing and bites him, <coughs> affecting him vampirism before leaving, allowing Gina and Village Girl to keep watch over Helsing. When Van Helsing wakes, he realizes what has happened. He heats the metal tool in brazier until it's red hot, but cauterizes his throat wound and pours holy water on it to purify it. Yay! The wound disappears as Gina and the village girl watch from the rafters, shocked that Van Helsing overcame a vampire bite and saved himself from vampirism. Baron Meinster, meanwhile, abducts Maria from the school and brings her to the mill, intending to vampirize her in front of Van Helsing. As Meinster attempts to hypnotize her to make her compliant to his will, Van Helsing seizes a canteen of holy water that dropped in their earlier fight. Gina and the village girl try to hiss a warning to the master, but Van Helsing manages to throw its contents into the Baron's face, which sears him like acid. Meister kicks over the brazier of hot coals, starting a fire. The Baron runs outside and, and his brides make their escape into the night. Van Helsing takes Marianne up into the mill, <coughs> then out via the huge sails, which he moves to form a gigantic shadow of a cross over Meister. Van Helsing goes to ground level to make sure Meister is dead, and comforts Marianne as the mill burns. What happened to Gina Village Girls never stated, and to assume they're still at large in the village. So yeah, this is pretty interesting, although, unfortunately, Dracula is not in this movie, so it is a big, uh, well, the title's a bit, well, misleading, so yeah. Anyway, let's look at some production notes as well as some stuff about the novelization of this movie. Christopher Lee says he refused to reprise his role as Dracula in a sequel. Hammer commissioned Jimmy Sangster to write a sequel, sequel script, Disciple of Dracula, with Dracula only making a cameo and the rest of the film about being an accolade of the vampire. The script was rewritten by Peter Bryan with two more references to Dracula, while the Van Helsing was added. The script was then rewritten by Edward Percy. Quote, My own personal involvement in a film like Brides was always 100%, not because I felt it to be my duty, because but because I felt very strongly that the pictures were mine. No doubt Terry Fisher thought they were his, and Jimmy Sangster thought they belonged to him, and Peter C. knew they were his. Quote, this is by, end quote, this is by producer Anthony Hines. Most of the interior shots were done at Bray Studios. The exterior shooting locations were a nearby Black Park and Oakley Court. The ending was to have, or, the ending was to ha, or, have originally had the vampires destroyed by a swarm of bats, Raised from hell by an arcane ritual. The ending was rejected by Peter Cushing, who claimed that Van Helsing would never resort to the use of black magic. This co the concept of this ending was used three years later for the climax of Hammer's The Kiss of the Vampire. Christopher Lee was approached to reprise his role as Dracula for this film, but turned it down and the script reshaped by Jimmy Sangster. Jimmy Sangster, director Terrence Fisher, and Peter Cushing were apparently involved in rewriting the script. Hmm, interesting. A paperback novelization of the film by Dean Owen was published by Monarch Books in 1960 and features an entire subplot, subplot but a character named Latour, a talisman who serves the Meinster estate, a subplot where Van Helsing and Marion fall in love and have sex. Ooh my. The climax features a black magic ceremony where Dr. Van Helsing summons a swarm of vampire bats 
Sword Bear Meister for violating the vampire code, drinking the blood of his own mother and turning her into a vampire. The ending was unused in this film, but it was used as the climax of the 1962 Hammer Horror classic, Kiss of the Vampire. In its climax, Professor Zimmer, played by Clifford Evans, performs the ceremony and the bats attack, bats attack Castle Ravna and the vampires that are there. So yeah, overall, like I said, the title is a bit misleading, so there's that to take into consideration. So overall, I give The Brides of Dracula three jack-o'-lanterns out of five. Well, join me tomorrow as we take a look at Dracula, Prince of Darkness. <laughs> so, until tomorrow, peace.